Welcome to Scramble Game Show. This is the first show after the election. As you probably have seen some of the uh, programs on our show, uh, we had a uh, candidates forum, uh, a eight hour special that uh, included uh, many interviews that we made uh, with uh, the candidates from uh, uh, federal level, Congress, uh, co Congress, uh, and uh, state level Senate Assembly and uh, um, the uh, county level as well as uh, uh, the judicial offices and so on and so forth. And uh, these interviews um, are accumulated throughout the uh, sort of a prior to the election and we want to uh, give you a chance to watch so you could uh, at least uh, get familiar with the uh, candidates. Now, the election is over and uh, the president gets another four years. And of course, uh, as you probably have heard from the uh, uh, campaign, uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, expectations, okay? And we also certainly are very concerned with the so-called uh, physical uh, cliff. And so the president in the second term uh, has to get on with it, okay, to uh, uh, get our uh, so-called so house in order. Now, we, on the other hand, uh, is not going to do any more interviews. So today we're going to introduce you our game, and we would like to play a game to make uh, uh, you uh, sort of relaxed after uh, the election. I assume that you have uh, casted your vote and you watched uh, the uh, debates and uh, you probably uh, you know, tune in a lot of uh, um, campaign talks. Now that is all over, so let's take a break. Let's play a game. Today I want to introduce to you uh, the Mahjong game. And uh, in this Mahjong game, uh, as you probably have heard, the Mahjong game is a very old ancient game from uh, China uh, and it's adopted in the Western world and uh, in fact uh, there's a lot of people now playing this game. Um, but that's the regular Mahjong tiles. And I want to also uh, introduce to you a word game based on the Mahjong rules which uh, I call the Scramble Maja, okay? Uh, we'll do these two games and introduce to you so you would understand how these games are played. First of all, the Mahjong game has a long history and uh, many people believe, which I think it, it may be uh, very uh, true, uh, although I have not seen any scientific uh, report, that is playing Mahjong is beneficial to your brains, uh, particularly for people uh, getting older that uh, sometimes uh, you know, you're, you're sort of uh, uh, become forgetful, this type of uh, you know, Alzheimer concern. Mahjong game gives you uh, this sort of a, a revitalization of the brain and keep your brain sharp. And um, that might be the reason, actually, the Mahjong game is played a lot uh, by older people and in, in this country um, uh, when it's uh, uh, sort of uh, getting popular. And it started in the, uh, you know, in the Jewish community, the Jewish woman, and more in the older generation, in the uh, grandma level. A lot of people uh, played Mahjong. Yeah. So that's one you know, sort of a, a benefit at it from a health point of view. But the Mahjong itself is such a fun game, okay? Uh, sometimes uh, it becomes almost addictive, addictive in the sense that people play hours and hours. That's the part that may not be so healthy, that is, you sit on a table, okay, and table, a square table like I am sitting in on one side, uh, for hours. And, um, that's not really healthy. Although some people argue that, well, you use your arms, you do this, you know, shoveling the tiles, you, you know, sort the tiles, 
and you do move a little bit, your hands and so forth. But I think sitting for hours definitely is not a good thing. So um, I would have just you know, raised that as advice. You should. Uh, the game played every you know, three or four games. Get up and exercise. And the Chinese actually figured this way out before. They play this uh, by uh, throwing a dice to determine the seats of the four people. Okay? So you throw a dice, and there's so-called uh, east, west, north, south, this directions. And each will uh, sit at one edge of the table. Now, they call one round when the the mahjong game go through one round a round means beginning with one person as a dealer let's say i'm the dealer and if i win i keep on winning i can keep on to be the dealer and if i lose i have to give the give the dealership to the next person and this pass on one cycle it's called one round and typically uh, you could, every round, you re-throw the dice, you change seats. Why? Because um, if you sit next to a certain person, uh, and, and the, the bhajan play is in a rotation, you know, sort of a clockwise sequ uh, sequence, you will always be uh, either behind a certain person and, or after a certain person, uh, uh, before or after, that gives you um, um, unfair advantage sometimes. If the person is a very good player, uh, always ahead of you, you probably will not get many uh, cards from this guy because he knows what you may want. He sort of uh, controls his tiles uh, very tightly. Then you will not have the advantage. So switching seeds is one of the things that uh, uh, when the Chinese play in mahjong, they do that by throwing the eyes, reshovel, and then you sit down. Uh, usually, though, they don't do it do every round. Maybe every four rounds to check. Okay, four rounds then, and sometimes uh, this this round is called chen, uh, a round. Um, four rounds you change seat, and the game often played. Eight hours. Uh, sometimes, you know, they call it the 16 round. Okay, I guess uh, when people play fast, a typical one round it, it could be uh, half an hour, a uh, little bit more. Depends on how fast people play. So you can figure out, you know, 16 rounds could be like eight hours, ten hours, and that's a lot of time. All right, you probably wondered, well. I don't know what you're talking about. You're talking about going around and around. What is the game? So let's begin with that. Here I have a box, okay? And this box, it's called Mahjong, okay? Mahjong, see? M-A-H-J-O-N-G. Sometimes the double G spelling. It depends on where you read these, uh, since the sound, so people spelling wise can be very different. You can drop the H, Ma, uh, you can add another G on, onto the Jiang, so Ma Jiang can be spelled many different ways. And also, because the pronunciation of the Chinese dialect, uh, the Ma Jiang, uh, again, will be spelled differently. Uh, the Hong Kong people will be pronounced certain ways. Uh, Northern Chinese and Southern Chinese and so on. So the Ma Jiang uh, in, in the uh, translation or spelling in English could be many, many different ways. But you probably uh, will you know, catch it anyway. It's very similar, not drastically different. Okay, now I open this Ma Jiang set. Okay, uh, you can see it's full of these tiles. First, let me explain okay the set the uh, chinese mahjong set are based on uh, three major suits okay each suit has uh, sort of like a 
number one to nine. Uh, let's just take an example. Say this suit is circle, this, this circle, okay? Uh, actually, many ways you can uh, describe this. You can call it a coin. Because look, this look like a coin. Or you can call it a pie. It certainly looks like a pie. Or you can call it pizza. It looks like a pizza, right? So this suit is this circle. And this suit has one, two, three, four, up to nine. Example here, I happen to have almost sorted out one, two. You see that? Okay, the two, it just become two smaller circle. One is a bigger circle, okay? Three will be three big circle, a uh, three circle, okay? So, let me uh, put this all out here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight and nine. Okay, now you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This mahjong set definitely is made for Western people, and uh, you notice that they actually put the uh, numerical numbers on top one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so that help you <laughs> as if you don't know how to count. Of course, for the circle, it's easy to count, okay? One to nine. Now, this suit has these nine numbers. For each number, there'll be four tiles. It will be four ones, let's call pizza. Four, one pizza. Four, two pizza. Four, three pizza. And four, nine pizza, okay? so. That makes this suit, right, 36 pieces. Because 9 times 4 is 36. So you have 36, and we call it pizza, let's say, okay, or coin, or pie, all right? Now, there are two other suits, okay? Now, the other suit is these Sticks, you can call it sticks. Typically, Chinese will call it uh, like bamboo. I mean, bamboo is of course is sticks, and particularly when they this sticks here has these uh, uh, notches, really you know make it look like a bamboo. So let's just call it bamboo. Again, they will be. Um, Nine pieces, let's see, okay, uh, find the nine pieces. Two, three, four, five, seven, nine, eight, okay, I need a six, here's a six, okay, six, seven, five, hmm. I need a one, okay. Now, interesting about one, where is one? Hmm. Ah, here. Now, here is one to nine in uh, bamboo sticks. Okay, we call it tiaozi, means strips uh, or sticks. Huh? Interesting. This five, the five is hidden in the middle, almost invisible. Six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so eight is in the middle too. Now, the only thing I need to call your attention out is the num the one, instead of a, a stick, they actually made a pattern look like a bird, okay? Bird. Um, so, for this suit, you need to remember the one stick really is a bird. It looks like a bird, okay? 
and then you have two sticks, three stick, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The arrangement of the the two, three, okay, the three, it's uh, uh, symmetrical and pile up like this. So always center, centrally symmetrical. Whereas three pizza, they didn't arrange the three in a in a symmetrical sort of like a one on top, two on the bottom. Rather, it's a diagonal three. Okay. Now, why they do this, I don't know. Nobody knows. Uh, I guess it's just artist design in the beginning and, uh, and never changed. And that, in terms of pizza, it looks like this: one, two, three. You just simply have to count how many circles and the sticks. You have to count how many sticks. Now. The one that is a little tricky is number eight. This eight sticks, because the arrangement is make looks like two M back to back or upside down, right? Two M. Um, M is one stroke, two strokes, three stroke, four. So that four strokes of four sticks. And if you do have two M, okay, up and down, opposite, it looks like eight sticks. All right. Whereas nine is very simple, simply three rows of three, okay? So, so that's the second suit. Again, one to nine, each has four pieces, so 36 sticks. 36 pies, 36 sticks. All right. Now, the third suit is, we call it numerals. The numerals is um, implied in the mahjong usually is, is numerals describe money. Okay, Again, you have one up to nine. Since the numerals, of course, it's not really uh, one to nine in a sense. It's, it's the unit here, this one. One is a very interesting numeral numerical uh, uh, unit in Chinese. Uh, the Chinese does not uh, write the uh, numerals three digits at a time. Well, they can write it that way. I mean, nowadays, uh, everybody follows the Arabic system and uh, use three zeros, then comma, three zero commas as you advance in, in terms of digits. But the Chinese devised this in terms of four before. So instead of, uh, well, you'd suddenly have uh, the uh, one to nine uh, as uh, the uh, single digit, and double digit is in the tens, right? So it become 10. And then third will become 100, and 1,000. And whereas in, in English, we say 10,000. Once you can, right? Um, one, ten, hundred, then after hundred, thousand. After thousand, you say ten thousand. But the Chinese used a word, unique word, called what? Okay? Yi, shi, bai, qian, right? One, shi means ten, bai means hundred, qian means thousand. Okay? And then, one means 10,000. They don't say 十千, they say one. So that's what this character one means, is a 10,000. So this numerical, uh, nu uh, numeral suit basically is 10,000. And when you have a one on top, is one 10,000. Two on top is two 10,000. Three on top is three 10,000, okay? Uh, why this is chosen? Because in the <clears throat> ancient time, this 10,000 is a big number, particularly when you use them to count money. Okay? It's sort of like in, uh, in the Western world, used to be people say, million. Millionaire is a big deal. Uh, although nowadays, it uh, doesn't seem to be a big deal. you got, you know, Lots of millionaires in, uh, say, for example, Silicon Valley and Wall Street and so forth, right? But in the older days, million is very significant. So millionaire is significant, right? 
The same in Chinese. 10,000 was very significant. Therefore, 10,000 is one is used on the Mahjong tile. And, and you say, I have 10,000, 20, you know, uh, 20, 10,000, two 10,000 is the same as 20,000 in English. Okay? So this, this is a little twist that when you play Mahjong, you need to know that. Okay, let's find out whether we can find all this nine pieces. Yes, indeed. One. 10,000, 2, 10,000, 3, 10,000, 4, 10,000, 5, 10,000, 6, 10,000, 7, 10,000, 8, 10,000, 9, 10,000. Again, nine pieces, and each piece has four, each uh, number has four pieces. So it will be 36 in this suit. Now you remember, we've got three suits. The pie, the stick, the number, the numerals, okay? And uh, each has 36. So 3 times 36, how many? 108, right? So you have 108 in the three suits in the Mahjong set. All right. Are there anything else? Yes, there are something else. Okay, first, let me introduce this so-called directions. Although in Mahjong, people... Uh, use the word direction to actually describe the wind. For example, this character is dong, means east. Okay, the game comes from east, it's dong. When peeps like this, this tile, they will say dong feng. Dong feng means east wind. Okay, now the feng associated with the east is probably also. Uh, because they use this direction to determine seating. When in the beginning of the game, you would pick four characters, east, south, west, north. All right? These four pieces. Now, in, in the beginning, they would do this, mix them up. So you don't know which one is which. Then they take a die, okay, and throw. So normally you sit, let's say people already sit it down for uh, sides of the table, and you could do a dice, let's five if I count. One, two, three, four, five of me. And I pick a tile. West, then I supposed to find the west. Now, usually the table sit in the house, whatever, they know their house orientation. They say, oh, west is this side, then you sit west, east, south, okay? Or it can artificially determine the direction on the table because sometimes the mahjong table is specially designed, okay? And on the corner or mahjong may have indicated which side is east, which is south, and west, and north. Regardless how you orient the table, the table already has directions. You can follow that, okay? Although, it's a pretty good idea to understand your orientation in the, in the uh, house, and uh, uh, particularly, you know, sort of in relation to the sunrise in the east. Uh, and... Uh, when you play the game a long time, the sun sets on the west. Okay? So, that is the four winds. East, south, north, west. Now, each east direction also have four pieces, as I've shown you here. The four east here. Okay? There will be four south, four north, four west. Okay? Oops, usually is this way. Chinese always say, Dong Nan Xi Bei, Dong Nan Xi Bei. East, south, west, north. Uh, if, you, if you read a map in front of you, people generally has the orientation, okay? It will be north, south, uh, west, east. So the east, south, west, 
north is, is this kind of sequence. From your right, coming down clockwise, is east, south, west, north. Okay? This is, again, when you do the seating, and if you have a table that doesn't have markings of Dongnan uh, Shibei or the west, uh, east, south direction, or you don't even know the house is situated and so on, you got to artificially determine that as east, you know, the dealer will say, my right hand side, that's, you know, uh, east, south, west, north. By the way, this direction is also followed in the... Um, the bridge game, okay, when people play bridge, uh, whether duplicate bridge or, uh, you know, or, or uh, a social bridge, uh, partners are, you know, north, uh, south, play against uh, east and west. And the direction is east, south, west, north, okay? Right, okay. So, now... With this introduced, you had 108, three suits, plus 4 times 4, 16, okay? That's 124, right? 108 plus 16 is 124. Now, do you have more? Yes. Okay. Just three more characters. Okay, we have to find those characters. Let's see, where are they? Zhong Fa Bai. Okay, Zhong Fa Bai. Oops. Hey, it's very tough to get it out. Bai Fa. Okay, these winds, we may as well, since we see it, we can put it over here, although we don't have to. One more. Ah, right here. Okay. Now, in my hand, I have three different design or characters here. Okay. Now, the way Chinese would say it, is say, Zhong Fa Bai. Zhong Fa Bai. Zhong is middle. And China is called Middle Kingdom. Zhong Guo, that's Zhong. So this character, Zhong, okay, in fact, they put C here. I guess is because China uh, for the Western. This Zhong, they had a C character here. Fa. The Fa character is very familiar if you are in Hong Kong or in any place during the Chinese New Year. They always say, Gong Xi Fa Cai. Fa Cai. Fa Cai means get rich, become rich. Okay? It's like a Fa. It's it's a uh, prosperous the word. So that character is selected in this. Again, each card has four pieces. Bai. The last one is Bai. Okay. This Bai, they use a B as indication. Okay. It's like a board, really. In fact, Chinese will say, Bai Bai, white board, or just board, 
，OK， 白板，所、so, 以这个白，中发白，那 this three makes it what make it uh, uh, three times four is twelve. We said before um, uh, we had one hundred eight plus um, sixteen. 